What is up everyone, Nick here, and today we're going to be building our very own arc reactor. In this video, I'll briefly cover how I printed all the parts, how we're gonna paint this, how we're gonna program the NeoPixels to light this up, and how I assembled it. This particular design is the Mark I arc reactor from the very first Iron Man movie. This is the one that Tony Stark builds while he's in the cave. I got these files from Neon Robotnik. He is a super talented designer and he's made a bunch of different versions of the arc reactor. And this one even includes the stand that says proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Now this is the very first project I've ever built from the ground up using resin printers. So don't expect this video to go too into detail about how I actually printed it because I barely know myself. The one thing that I do know with absolute certainty is that this thing is fragile. I've broken so many parts removing supports, uh, accidentally dropping parts on the floor, whoops. And the reason why it's so fragile is one, I've yet to find the ideal printing settings for the resins I'm using, and two, this gray resin that you see here is any cubic basic resin. It's one of the most fragile resins you can get. So thankfully this is gonna stay on the display stand and it's not gonna be moving much. And the clear resin that I use for the transparent parts is Soraya Tech Blue Clear version two. This stuff is really, really good, but since I don't have my print settings dialed down, it's an absolute pain to print. So to compensate for my inability to print overhangs, I actually modified a few of these 3D models to be able to print flat. But consequently, I had to sand down quite a few of these edges to get all the parts to fit together correctly. But hey, I managed, we have all the parts here, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna break this down and how we're gonna paint this. All right, so we have all of our parts laid out. The very first thing we're gonna do is paint this in a flat black. This is the casing for the entire arc reactor. And to achieve that effect, we're gonna use this Duplicolor Sandable Primer. It's really nice flat black. The next part we're going to be inserting in this is this weird fan thing. This is going to be painted silver. It's gonna go right in here, just like so. And we're going to be using this all clad dark aluminum to achieve this color. And as you can see, there's a hole going down the middle. This is where we're going to be running all our wires for our NeoPixels. And the very next step is going to be inserting this clear ring right here. And then we're just going to drop our NeoPixels right in there. It's practically a perfect fit. And then we'll cover that up with this clear piece right here, just like that. And the next step is painting this gunmetal gray. We're going to be using another all clad paint. This is steel all clad paint. And once that's painted, we're going to assemble it together over this ring piece, just like a sandwich, just like that. Once this is assembled, we're also going to be wrapping each individual coil in copper wire to give it that authentic look. And the last pieces are quite self-explanatory. We have this little ring piece, which is going to be painted gold. Unfortunately, I don't have any all clad gold left, so I'm gonna try painting it with Montana metallic gold. Hopefully it should look pretty good. The next piece we'll be painting is this ring. It's gonna be painted a metallic red. I'm probably just gonna brush this on. I might thin it and airbrush it, but that's a lot of work for what it is. This is going to be covered by another piece, so why bother? And the last piece we're going to be painting is this outer ring. It's also going to be painted gunmetal, and this inner ring here is going to be painted silver. I have this nice dark aluminum silver we can use, and that should be pretty much it. So to assemble it, this piece goes in here, then this outer ring here goes over it, and then it just sandwiches like so. And we're also gonna have to glue all these parts together. But we're not quite done yet because we're also going to be sanding the ever-loving crap out of this stand. Why is that? Because we're going to be painting it chrome with this Duralumin Tough by the Digital Armory. This stuff is absolutely incredible. It is so shiny. So chrome, we're gonna be able to see our face in this. Once we've gotten this as smooth as we possibly can, we're gonna coat it in flat primer black, and then we're going to be covering this entire thing in 2K clear coat to make it super, super glossy, and then we're going to be painting it with this Drew Lumen Tough. So with that said, we're gonna head into the garage and we're gonna start sanding and painting this thing. All right, so I've just sanded the vast majority of the display stand. The only part that I'm really gonna have to spend a lot of time sanding with just regular sandpaper is the inside of the actual housing itself. I'm not able to reach it with my electric sander. So it's gonna take a while to get this absolutely smooth through traditional means, but I think I can get there. The base and the peg itself are pretty much done. I just have to put a layer of primer down and start working on all the imperfections with spot putty, but I won't bore you guys too much with that. So let's get to the actual painting.
All right, so we're finally back inside. Everything is painted and we can finally start assembling this thing. And the very first thing we're gonna do is start wrapping copper wire around the coils. Essentially, I'm taking a big chunk of this 18 gauge wire I'm stripping it down, I'm removing the entirety of the copper from inside, and I'm basically taking six or seven individual strands, removing it from this bundle, wrapping them at both ends, and then wrapping it around the coil. So let's take a closer look as I finish the last ones I have to do. All right, so we have our outer ring here, we have our bundle of wires here, it's about six wires, and at each end I twisted the wires together so that they don't fray apart. And now we're gonna glue one end to the bottom of this outer ring. So let's grab our cyanoacrylic glue and do that right now. Doesn't need to be a crazy amount of glue, just like a little drop. This is going to keep our wire from slipping because we wanna wrap it as tight as we possibly can. I'm gonna use some accelerator right now to make this a little bit easier to glue on, just like so. So we have one end, glued on right here and we can start wrapping this around. So I'm gonna work my way from one edge of this outer ring to the other here. And we can grab this other end and start feeding it through the slot here, pulling on it slowly. If it catches on anything, we can just fix that like so. Untwist this, we want it to go straight on. And we're just gonna repeat this process until we have the entire spool on. That, pulling on it. Ooh, that went smoothly, I like that. And if you wanna give it a little bit of help, you can spread these wires with your finger because they might get bunched up on one side more than the other. We are done. We do have this little nub we're gonna have to deal with. If you wanna cut it further along, like about here and glue it there, you absolutely can. I don't mind gluing it on the surface because it really doesn't show all that much. I'm just gonna grab my glue and once again, just a tiny, oh God, that is way too much. Okay, so I managed to get most of that glue off and we're just gonna add a little bit of accelerator. All right, so after a little bit of work, I managed to wrap every single one of these coils with copper wire. Now all of our parts are painted and ready to go. One last thing though, we have to start working on the lights. So for the purposes of this project, we're going to be using NeoPixels. NeoPixels is kind of the catch-all name for these. NeoPixels are specifically made by Adafruit and the name will vary depending on where you get them. But what are NeoPixels? NeoPixels are basically individually addressable RGB lights. It means that we can make these any color we want, any intensity, we can program patterns into these using an Arduino. I could just program these like white or blue, but that would be kind of boring. So I managed to track down a modified version of Fast LED's fire example, meaning it flickers like a fire. But with this version, I can change the color to blue and I can also play around with some of the effects, meaning I can change the flickering, I can change the intensity, among other things. So before we start wiring this up, let's go check the code. So here we have the code. The one thing that we will need to add is the FastLED library, meaning we click on sketch, we go to include library, and we go to manage libraries. And here it should load up in just a second. Here we are. And from here, we can just type fast lead and download the library. Here it is. So as you can see, I can't install it because I already have it installed. So let's move this away. So we have the fast lead library installed. One other thing we will need to change is the number of LEDs. Now this will depend on your setup. For mine, I have 19 total LEDs, so you can just type the amount of LEDs that you have. The person that wrote this code left a super comprehensive guide on how to actually set up the fire palette. And number three here is exactly what we want to do. It's a similar gradient, but in blue colors rather than red ones. So if we follow his guide, we only have to modify a few things for this to work for our project. So let's scroll down to void setup. We'll see this line of code here called GPAL. And this is how we're gonna set up our color palette. So we have this second one here, which is for the blue palette. So we can completely select this, copy paste it and put it here. Next up, we can scroll down to the void loop. We only have to change a few things. We have to change the cooling and the sparking. So basically these two things, we're going to change it to the coldest value, which is 20, and we're going to crank it up to the highest value for sparking, which is 200. You're more than welcome to mess around with these values. I just found that 20 and 200 gave the best effect for an arc reactor. But now that we've modified that, we can start compiling the code onto our Arduino Nano. So we're finally at the point where we can start soldering this thing up. So you'll see 
that these are actually two separate NeoPixel modules. I have this tiny jewel with seven NeoPixels and I have this outer ring and they perfectly fit together. Now, typically when you're soldering up a NeoPixel, you're only using the five volt DC power one ground and the data input. So it should be pretty obvious. You have power and you have your ground. And this third pin is going to send the signals telling what the NeoPixel should do, which colors, which effects, etc., etc. Now, how do we send the signal going to this one to this one? Well, it's pretty easy actually. So let's say we have these two together. You'll notice that there's a data out. So basically this data out pin, we're going to solder a small wire going from this one to the data input pin on the other one. And if we put the correct amount of NeoPixels in the code, this should all light up no problem. However, we are also going to have to send five volt power and a ground wire to this outer ring. So to solve that issue, let's take this JR connector and cut it in half, just like so. And we're going to take the red and the black wire of this JR connector and we're going to add additional wire splits. So it's gonna split in two and it's gonna split in two, both of which are going to go to the outer ring and the center of this Arduino. And now that we have the NeoPixels all wired up, it's time to solder the other end of the JR connector to the Arduino itself. And lastly, we need another connector to send power to the Arduino itself. Personally, I like using JST connectors because I have a few USB cables like these with JST connectors already pre-soldered to them. So basically I'm going to be able to solder this to the Arduino and just plug this to whatever power source I need. Awesome, so we have our Arduino wired up. We also have our NeoPixel wired up. Now let's see if any of this works. I may or may not have already tested it. This is just for dramatic effect. Shh. Okay, so JR connectors together like so. JST connector to the USB cable and USB cable to the power bank. Fire this up and Hey, there we go. So the modifications we made to the original code allows the lights to change gradually instead of super dramatically. And I think this gives a really good look for an arc reactor. And now that we know that the NeoPixels work properly, it's time for the final assembly. So let's get to it. Okay, so the very first part we're gonna deal with is this little fan piece. We're gonna just place it right in there. And then we can drop this ring here and drop the NeoPixel right through. I don't think these parts will need any glue, but we're about to find out. And we can just drop this over it. Uh, there is a bit of jiggle though, so we might have to start gluing some of these parts in. All right, so what I ended up doing is gluing these two parts together and then adding a little bit of adhesive foam to the back of this. That way it doesn't rattle around while it's inside the casing. So I should be able to just feed this in here like so, and then just add the cover on this. Nice. And next up, we're gonna have to glue this in place. We're just going to add a teeny bit of glue on each of these corners. This is kind of a friction fit, but the rest of the ring is going to be glued to this, and I don't want this falling off like that. So we're just gonna glue that in place right now. Voila. While this is still curing, we may as well insert this piece in here. No glue needed, it just slots right in. And it's basically there forever. It's not gonna fall out. This is the second one I've had to print because I inserted one and I tried taking it out and I just shattered it. And now let's glue this ring on um, from the looks of it. Yeah, we're gonna have to glue it along this edge here. Yes, this is the smart way of doing it, I think and we're going to have to align it as best we can with these edges there. Almost forgot, we have to install this in first and then we can put this in. So this just goes right in there like that. I think this could be a press fit. Uh, no, I'll put a little bit of glue because I don't want to risk it. 
Not a crazy amount because it's still a pretty good press fit. Uh, oh God, this is not going well. This is not going well. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah, there it is. So that's been pressed in there. Now we still have this to deal with. And just like that, we have ourselves a fully functional arc reactor. Well, not fully functional. I mean, it, li it lights up. It doesn't actually work. So let's just plug this into the Arduino and then we can plug that into the power bank and see how it looks. And should boot up in just a second. Hey, there we are. I'm really happy with the modified fire code. This was a great idea. It's much better than just a stagnant white or blue. And now that everything is glued together, it just feels amazing to hold. It's like one solid piece. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough that it feels good in the hand. But no Mark I arc reactor would be complete without its display stand. So I managed to sand down all the parts super, super smooth. There's not all that many blemishes or imperfections when it comes to the print itself, but I did have some issues with the clear coat. So what I did is put a layer down of black primer, which is matte black, and then I added a layer of 2K clear coat to give it that gloss black finish. But the clear coat itself came out a little wavy and it shows in the print. As you can see, it's not a perfect surface. It kind of looks like a super chromed out pop metal. However, the actual paint itself, this is Duralumin Tough by the Digital Armory and it's absolutely amazing paint. If it weren't for the waviness of the clear coat, this would basically be a mirror finish. You could see yourself in this. Plus, I also had some issues with dust particles getting into my paint and my clear coat. So in the future, I'll probably consider getting some sort of ventilation system so that doesn't happen again. But all in all, for my first project using Duralumin, I am super happy with it. It looks fantastic. And it looks even better when it's on display. So I'll just set that aside, unplug this, throw the arc reactor in there, and plug it back in. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Check this out. Absolute beauty. Here's a look from the back. Honestly, I couldn't be happier with this. I'm super happy with the way this came out. If you'd like to see me build some more arc reactors in the future, like the Mark III and the Mark IV arc reactors from Iron Man 2, let me know in the comments below. And with that said, let's put this on display. Terribly sorry, sir, you've been evicted. You're gonna have to move over. All right, let's put this right there-ish. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's just Plug this back in. It's kind of difficult to do with, hey, I managed. There we go. Nice. Would you look at that? If you'd like this video and you'd like to see more, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support me, I have links down below to my social medias and I also have a link to my Ko-fi where you can support future projects by leaving a donation. And I also have my commissions open on Ko-fi. So if you'd like to get your own helmet, you can commission me at my Ko-fi. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.